the benefits of using business english phrases in a presentation are it makes your presentation more impactful it also gives a better structure and use of business english phrases brings in clarity in your presentation and last but not the least the another benefit of using business english phrases in your presentation it helps you to express your ideas accurately my name is piyush bhatia and i am the founder and ceo of bm english speaking institute private limited with me we have vishal lazarus who is a trainer with bm english speaking and also a corporate soft skills trainer hi vishal hi we welcome you to the season 2 of bm english speaking radio channel business english today is the 8th episode of season 2 which is titled 15 business english phrases for power pack presentations listeners do note that there are 15 short sections in this podcast for each short section there are 3 to 4 phrases i understand our earlier episodes were short but this one has a lot of business english phrases which will make your presentations more impactful so stay tuned vishal if one has to welcome attendees what does one say to welcome the attendees you must use any one of the following three number 1 good morning good afternoon good evening ladies and gentlemen number 2 on behalf of my company allow me to extend a warm welcome to you or number 3 hi everyone welcome to our monthly meeting oh great that brings me to section 2 how does one introduce a speaker in a presentation well each presentation has a different level of formality that will show in your welcome and you must customize it to match your audience use any of the three following one let me briefly introduce myself my name is david smith and i'm delighted to be here to talk to you about or number 2 the ju- just the way you did it at the beginning let me introduce myself my name is piyush bhatia and i am the founder and ceo of bm english speaking institute or number 3 hi i am john from company y and today i'd like to talk to you about what is very important here is your name and the company that you represent that's nice vishal that brings me to the third section at times it happens that i want to deliver a presentation but i want to address the questions at the end of the presentation how do i do that oh this is one of the most difficult parts because a lot of people have questions as the presentation is going on and if they interrupt you your flow of thought gets broken and you forget what you're going to say or you fumble so in order to ensure that your presentation is not disrupted by questions as soon as you introduce yourself you can use any one of these three phrases number 1 There will be time for questions at the end of the presentation. Number 2, I'll gladly answer any of your questions once we complete the presentation or number 3, I'd be grateful if you could ask your questions after the presentation. Oh wow. That means I am able to keep the questions at the end. Well, that brings me to the next section which is section 4. Now, I want to start my presentation. What do I say? Usually what happens is once we have the presentation up we just start off immediately by saying either by saying good morning and you'll start but setting up the stage is extremely important you need to introduce the presentation topic so you can use any one of the following phrases one today i'm here to talk to you about two what i'm going to talk to you about today is three I would like to take this opportunity to talk to you about four. I am delighted to be here today to tell you about five. I want to make a short presentation about or six. I'd like to give you a brief breakdown of. That's nice. Now that the stage is set, Vishal, you'll appreciate that in a presentation there is a fixed agenda. Now when i move from one point to the next point if i jump abruptly it doesn't sound nice 
how do I transit from one point to another point? You're absolutely right. If you do not transition from one point to another, your audience will not know whether your previous point is over or not, and they might get a little confused. You may use one of the following phrases to move on from one point to the next. One, now I'd like to move on to the next part. Two, this leads me to my next point, which is three, turning our attention now to or four, Let's now turn to. You are listening to BM English Speaking Radio channel and feel free to download transcript of this and all of our podcast on our website www.bmconsultantsindia.com forward slash number 18. Vishal, in a presentation, I use a lot of examples and I don't know what to say before I present these examples. Examples are an extremely important part of any presentation and you may use any one of the following phrases. 1. For example, this is the most common one. 2. A good example of this is 3. As an illustration 4. To illustrate this point or number 5. For instance. That brings us to the seventh section of this episode in which there are 15 sections. Let's say one has done a lot of research and pulled up data from various sources. What kind of English phrases would one use when referring to different sources? When referring to other data like research reports, spreadsheets, white papers, etc. Some of the useful phrases that you can use are 1. Based on the research done by WHO, for example. Two, according to the report. Or number three, consumer data in the white paper indicates. Wow, that's really helpful. In section eight, I would like to ask, graphs and images are part of any presentation we can say. What phrases one would use when presenting graphs and images? You're absolutely right. Presentations are usually full of graphs and images. You can use the following phrases to help your audience understand your visuals better. 1. Let me use a graphic to explain the situation. 2. I'd like to illustrate this point by showing you a chart. 3. Let the picture speak for themselves regarding the market survey. 4. I think the infographic perfectly shows you the increase in revenue. Or number five, if you look at this table or bar chart or flow chart, line graph, whatever, you can see that. Great, Vishal. In section nine, I would like to ask you, in one of your episodes, you taught us about voice modulation to emphasize on certain aspects. Now, what kind of English phrases would one use to lay emphasis on certain points? Like we discussed in that episode, laying emphasis actually gets your audience to pay full attention to that particular part that you want to tell them and it will help them understand better. Here are some suggestions. 1. It should be emphasized that. 2. I would like to draw your attention to this point. 3. Another significant point is that. Or 4. This is important because. Well, that brings us to the 10th section of this episode. Let's say someone is delivering a presentation. In middle of that, one realizes that the point may not be clearly understood. Let's say one wants to paraphrase. What kind of phrases should one use? At times, it might happen that you express yourself unclearly or the audience did not understand your point. It's understandable. In such a case, you should paraphrase your argument using simpler language. The phrases you can use, one, in other words, two, to put it more simply, three, what I mean to say is, four, to put it another way, five, to express my point differently. At BM English Speaking Institute, we train you to deliver power-packed presentations at our training centers in Mumbai. And yes, 
we also have an online training option for you too. Do check our website www.bmconsultantsindia.com. Vishal, questions are an integral part of any presentation, right? Absolutely. Now, let's say I want to invite audience to ask questions. What do I do? Now, as we mentioned earlier, we've asked our audience to hold on to their questions to the end of the presentation. Once you get there and you want to ask them, now please let me know what you need to know. Some of the phrases you can use are, one, I am happy to answer your questions now. Or two, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. One has answered all the questions, but just wants to ensure that there is enough clarity in the room. In section 12, I would like to ask you, what phrases one can use for clarity? You're absolutely right. After answering a question, if you want to check clarity from the audience, these are the phrases you can use. 1. Does this answer your question? 2. Did I make myself clear? Or 3. I hope this explains the situation to you. Vishal, I remember a marketing manager of a large corporate telling me that at the end of his presentation, he was asked some unfamiliar questions. How does one take care of that? What phrases should one use? This may happen where you do not have or you're not expected to have certain answers. You must not get afraid at this point of time. There are certain phrases that you can use that will help you. Some of these phrases are, one, that's an interesting question. I don't actually know off the top of my head, but I'll get back to you with the answer. Two, I'm afraid I'm unable to answer that at the moment. Perhaps I can get back to you later. Three, that's a very good question. However, I don't have any figures on that, so I can't give you an accurate answer. Number four, unfortunately, I'm not the best person to answer that. Oh, wow. This is really useful. That brings us to the 14th section of this episode. Let's say I want to summarize and conclude my presentation. What phrases do I use? At the end of the presentation, it is extremely important that you must summarize the important facts once again. You can use these phrases to summarize. One, I'd like to conclude by. 2. Weighing the pros and cons, I come to the conclusion that 3. In conclusion, let me sum up my main points. 4. Thank you all for listening. It was a pleasure being here today. 5. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening or thank you for your attention. Next. Well, that's it from me. Thanks very much. Or finally, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thanks for your attention. So that brings us to the last section of this episode. In a team presentation, there are multiple members delivering presentation. Let's say there's someone who's going to present after I have presented. Business English suggestions, please. Usually what happens is when we finish our presentation, we say thank you and we walk away. That's never a good way to handle things. To show that you are comfortable in an, in an office environment, you must always hand over to the next speaker. Phrases for that? I will now pass you over to my colleague, Jerry. Or, Arun, the floor is now yours. Thank you listeners for being with us. You are listening to BM English Speaking Radio Channel. And feel free to download transcript of this and all our podcasts from www.bmconsultantsindia.com forward slash number 80. Thank you Vishal for educating us on Business English Lessons. You're welcome. I'm convinced that listeners, you will now use all the Business English phrases so that you deliver power pack presentations that Vishal has taught us today. With that, we come to the end of episode 80 of season 2 by BM English Speaking Radio Channel. In the next episode, Vishal will help us learn 10 business English phrases for customer service. Thank you for listening.